Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to a Geek Network special interview. As always, I am your host, Keith, and I am joined by my co-host and sidekick tonight, and I'll introduce him in just a moment. But first, I want to welcome our special guest, author of Road of Bones and Sea of Sorrows, Rich. And Rich, you have to tell me how to pronounce your last name, because I've been debating it all day. No, no worries. Uh, it's uh, Dueck. Uh, Dueck, easy, thank you. Yeah, easiest way to think about it is pretend the O isn't there. And, gotcha, uh, okay. Right. I have, I have a very unusual Finnish last name, so I've struggled with people mispronouncing my name my entire <laughs> life, so I'm always careful with that stuff. <laughs> so, no yeah, gotcha. <laughs> so um, at Geek Network, uh, our series of shows are based on all forms of media that we consume. Mm -hmm. uh, most of our staff got to know each other simply by talking about what we like. Um, for instance, I always refer to Josue. I didn't even know Josue before we started recording together. So literally, we got to know each other talking about these things. So in the spirit of our first show, Binge Watching, I want to know what you've been watching. Uh, well, I was not able to escape the hype about Tiger King on Netflix. So <laughs> I wound up watching that straight through. Uh, pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. But a good time. But uh, in terms of like uh, more like... Uh, you know, usual stuff. Uh, I've, I've been watching uh, Lock and Key. Um, oh, so yeah, good. That. I, I love it because that, that's like one of my all-time favorite comics. So mm -hmm. I'm so excited that it, it, uh, it went to series. So I, I've just been like devouring that past few days. Um, yeah, it's really good. Um, I'm also looking to get started on the new season of Westworld, but I wanted to I felt like binge watching it, so I wanted to let a few episodes come out first. Uh, that's another <laughs> that I really like. Um, yeah, and that's about it right now. Yeah, Westworld. I I'm a big fan of Westworld, and mm -hmm. I've started re I've started watching the new season. And yeah, I'm like, man, I should have just waited <laughs> like for the whole season. <laughs> now I'm just sitting yeah, here for a week, being like, like, what does this mean? <laughs> you know, like, it's just like I, I remember, it used to be like, you know there'd be like a cliffhanger and you're like, oh, okay, I'm going to wait a week, you know, whatever. Now it's like, I, I have to know now. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So for the next two questions, I want to kick it over to my co-host and stalwart sidekick, Josue. Hey, what's up, Rich? It's, hey, it's me, Josue. And so I guess we're doing Respawn Ready first. Yeah, go for uh, that. Ask. Yeah, so we over at Respawn Ready would love to know if you've actually been playing anything, video game-wise or tabletop-wise. Yeah, um, been playing uh, video game wise. I've been splitting my time between playing Call of Duty. That's kind of like my stress reliever, you know. If, uh, nice. Get a little the the, the new one, the Battle Royale. The uh, well, no, I, I do like Modern Warfare. Like the I, I bought it like a while ago, but I've been mm. playing it a lot more. Uh, but yeah, like if I, you know, a little ca get a little cabin fever, and uh, it's like I just go online and uh, start shooting and it's a lot of fun um, <laughs> do that and then I, I just picked up um, there's this uh, PS4 game called uh, Control it's like oh I've been wanting to play that yeah it was on sale so I, I, I figured uh, I, I've been wanting to check it out I think it came out like last summer or something but it's really cool like I'm not that far into it but, uh, but it's, it's a lot of fun um, tabletop uh, I haven't like I'm a huge fan of tabletop games, but I haven't been playing them lately, and it's more like because uh, it's just really hard to schedule like four or five people to like get together at the same time. But yeah. I don't know. Now yeah. they're all inside. Maybe we'll do some like virtual tabletop or something with my, uh, <laughs> my RPG friends. We'll see. <clears throat> If you're into um, to uh, like not just like role playing tabletop but like board games, mm -hmm. uh, if you and your friends have Xboxes, the Xbox Game Pass has Ticket to Ride and Pandemic on there for free if you're a member. Oh and yeah. And so you can literally play digitally those board games. So and those are both great games. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I played Ticket to Ride. I've never played Pandemic. Seems strangely appropriate no. these days, but uh. <laughs> no, right? <laughs> Pandemic is super fun. It's more of yeah. a it's a co op. You play against the board, and it gets really uh -huh. it gets really crazy. Nice. Awesome. And then and then you mentioned control. Um, I first I heard about Control was last year's Game Awards because uh, mm -hmm. it was nominated for almost everything, and I'm like, what is this game? I've never even heard of it, but I've since looked into it and getting really good reviews. Yeah, it's fun. Like like I said, I, I really just started, so I haven't like you know gotten too deep into it. But it's like 
it's one of the you feel like you're you have like uh all these like powers like uh so the one i unlocked it, it's kind of like i guess similar to like uh like a Jedi thing where it's like, you can like levitate things and like throw them. Uh, it's a lot of fun, you know, like you sort of like see like a filing cabinet and like lift it up and throw it at, at an enemy and stuff. So <laughs> I've yeah. heard it described as like almost like lucid dreaming. We can just practically do anything. Yeah. Kind of. And, and the other weird thing that I dig about it is that it's got like one of these weird kind of like, uh, like the storyline almost feels like, like twin peaks in a way. Like, uh, Ooh. Like there's definitely like you know running mm. and action and stuff, but like, but you like turn a corner and the, and like you have to like pull lights, pull a light switch cord, and like you get transported to like some motel where there's like like where there's like a puzzle you have to like solve, and, and like people are like talking backwards to you and stuff like that. So hmm. yeah, so I, I like it so far. It's been pretty fun. Right on. Um, so then continuing over to our next show, it's uh for our infinite playlist. Uh, yeah, we'd like to know if you've actually been jamming to anything, listening to anything. Yeah, I made a uh, made a coronavirus playlist with a couple of my friends. Uh, I think uh, <laughs> uh, like we're on Spotify, so you can do this like collaborative playlist. So it's like I'll throw some songs in, I'll throw some songs in. So here, uh, I'll, I'll I'll just read you a few a few of uh, what I have on here. I have. Uh, uh, Nova Rockefeller, Just Things, uh, Gigi Allen, Bite It, Easter, oh, nice. uh, Fear, I Love Living in the City. Um, Very punk. Yeah. Hot Like a Sauna from Tricky, Gimme, Gimme, Gimme from Black Flag, Mommy's Little Monster, Social Distortion. You, know, you, you might be sensing a theme here, the kind of music I'm I love Social D. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, they're one of my favorite ones, so. Uh, what else we got on here? Some Neutral Milk Hotel, some uh, David Bowie. But then the, the other cool thing is it's like my friends are like putting stuff on there too. So it's like I'm, I'm it's stuff that I'm not like necessarily familiar with, but like I'm digging. Like um, <laughs> my friend put on a song by somebody called Castle Beat. I thought it was really good. Um, one other one, Dan Deacon. I don't know. Never heard of him, but uh, the song that they put on was good. It's called When I Was That's Dying. a lot like our, our yeah. show. Um, yeah. So, so it's called The Infinite Playlist because we have a playlist that's on most major music platforms at the moment. Uh-huh. And every week we have a random music theme that we we literally have a spinner basically where we pick uh-huh. one and yeah. we add songs. We nominate songs, but we all have very different tastes. Oh, um, so yeah. we hear a lot of different music from different people. So. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's the one that hosts way hosts and we really enjoy it um but uh our theme and i don't want to put you on the spot uh but <laughs> our theme this next week okay. is guilty pleasures ah. so if you have a guilty pleasure song that pops into your head we'd love we'll to hear it. or if you want to think about it we can we can talk about it later in the show too guilty pleasures hmm. i know dave Grohl says there's no such thing as a guilty pleasure but <laughs> It's like you, you, if you enjoy something, you enjoy it. <laughs> so, but you can think about it. We can move on and do the rest of the show, and then later on we can uh, bring it back up if you want to think about it. All right, yeah, give, give me a sec. Uh, okay, I, I, I listen to like a whole bunch of music, so let me let me, let me think about it for a sec. But I, okay. I, there's definitely some there's definitely some songs that like I'm, I would consider guilty pleasures. Yeah, like, there's songs. I'm the I'm the pop music apologist in the group, yeah. so I I I've I've pop music's great. I don't care what anyone says, so I always throw off the podcast a bit. So, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, so m- m- the last question then, um, oh, wait, and this I, is obviously I have a good one. I have a good one. Wait, it just yeah. kind of popped in my head. Uh, <laughs> I I love uh, that song, uh, Wrecking Ball. By, um, Miley Cyrus. By what? Oh. By Miley Cyrus. Miley Cyrus. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Awesome. I'm not like a Miley Cyrus guy. Not. A, I mean, like I like some pop music, but I'm not. But I don't know for some reason that song. Like if it's on, like I'll just like crank it. Like I don't know. That's amazing. That's awesome. <laughs> That's one hundred percent in the spirit of this. Right? I promise. Like, it. Pleasure, right? Yeah. I'm gonna get some groans with my selections next week. Cut, can I? <laughs> 
All right, great. Well, yeah, our last question and the one that's obviously going to be the, the subject that we're going to be talking about. Um, I host our last show called We Have Issues. Mm -hmm. Every week we talk about comics, books, and whatever anybody else might <laughs> be reading. Mm -hmm. And uh, what have you been reading recently? Well, um, you know, there's a couple of new series that uh, I've been reading that obviously I'm going to have to put pause on because we can't get new issues. <laughs> but um <laughs> A couple of things in recent months that I really, really dug are um, I really like the new uh, new Wolverine series that's out. Right. And uh, the new Ghost Rider series from Marvel. Um, I've been following both of those, really enjoying them. Um, on the uh, indie side of things, uh, what, what am I, what am I reading? Uh, there's a book called... Um, uh, Tartarus that just started coming out by uh, Johnny Christmas. Uh, oh, I love Tartarus. Yeah, Tartarus. Uh, that's really good. Um, and then another one that I thought was cool. I'm not sure if it's out yet because I, I'm friends with the guy who does it and he sent me a PDF. But uh, it's it's called uh, Dead Dogs Bite by Tyler Boss. Um, hmm. I, I, like I said, I'm not 100% sure it's out yet. I, I, like, because, uh, but it's it's really good. So if and when if it's not out yet, when it does come out, I, I would definitely check it out. It's it's kind of like uh, trippy, like horror kind of in that like Twin Peaks vibe, like I was saying about Control. Which, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was it was really good. So definitely gonna like keep up with that. Um, and then like, I've been, you know, kind of like with a lot more time to read, I've just been kind of like maybe like revisiting some of the old stuff, like from my bookshelf. So I decided, uh, trans, trans metropolitan is like probably one of my favorite, it probably is like oh, my favorite comic. So it's, so, it's so good. And not a lot of people know about it. It's really strange. Yeah. This day and age, not enough people know about trans metropolitan. Yeah, so I was just looking at my bookshelf, and I was like, I, I picked up the first volume, and I was like, yeah, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna read the whole thing through again because it's been a while, <laughs> and I love it so much. And uh, <laughs> and then the other thing was I have a bunch of those, um, like the uh, the complete Judge Dredd case files. So right, yeah. Also books that, like I, I bought because I love, I, like I love Judge Dredd, and, and I thought they looked cool, but I bought a bunch, and then just sort of like I read the first one and I have like, I think like two, three and four that I, I had just been like sitting around. So I'm like, I'm going to, I'm going to go through these two. So. Nice. Yeah, that's about it. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Well, um, I want to go ahead and start talking a bit about your work, but first I want to go ahead and get an idea about yourself. Now, from what my research indicates, it appears that, um, that you do a lot of copywriting is, did comics come after this or is this your, like, you know, is right. this something you've done longer and comics is like the other passion that you've embraced? Yeah. I mean, copywriting is kind of like, uh, I mean, that's like my day job, you know, it, it's, um, it's, uh, just normal. Like go to work every day and, and I, I write like ads and stuff. And I had been doing that for a while since, uh, since before I, started writing comics but writing comics is something I've, I've wanted to do like since i was reading them uh as a kid you know it was just sort of um uh for a while i i i, I had wanted to work more in prose so i was like trying that and i was one of those people who kind of like i have like five novels started that like i never got past a certain point from you know uh so, right, I, I hear that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like it's like a common common uh, writer writer ailment. Uh, you're not like finishing like the the novel or whatever, but 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 basically, you know, like comics had always been kind of something I really wanted to do, and then I didn't really kind of necessarily understand kind of how like what the process was. Like I figured you had to write a script, but then I was like, well, then what do you do? Are you supposed to draw it? Do you you, know, you obviously get get somebody to draw it, but how do you know if the script is something that they're going to want to draw? So, so basically I just started, I, I took a couple of classes and I took, um, started like going to conventions and talking to people and, um, started with a, a few shorter scripts. Like, um, the first series I ever did was called uh, gutter magic. Um, mm -hmm. that was in 2016, but I had been working on it like 
in uh, one capacity or another since like about 2011, 2012, where what I, what I did was I write these like five page short stories with the characters, but they were kind of mm -hmm. like contained. Um, and then just sort of like working up to like longer stuff until I was doing like full issues and then, and then the four issue miniseries. So and I, I th the reason I did that was because I, I was just trying to sort of like find my feet, like, you know, I mean, I, comics you know they, they they do cost money to to make and and i was like i don't want to like invest in like producing like a full issue or something if, if i'm not really good at it so let me start with, like the, the smaller stuff and kind of get it get my top yeah. down and then uh and then i'll move on and, and it, it worked out because you know i still you know like the older like shorter stuff it's like you know I like it, but it, but I think it's definitely like like if I like read that stuff and I see like where I've come from then and it's like you know I think I've gotten like uh, gotten better like in the uh, in the intervening years. But it was cool, you know. Like I, I'd also mm -hmm. like meet people and do like uh, I would do like stories and like anthologies and things like that. Like uh, my friend Joe Mulvey, who's an artist on um, was my artist on Wailing Wade. He had a he had a book called Scam. And he wanted to do uh, for his when he kickstarted the um, the collection. He wanted to do a whole bunch of short stories in the back, so he asked me to write one. And it was great. Got to work with uh, Joe Eisma. He's uh, he did oh, wow. series. Um, yeah, that, that was like I was like starstruck because at the time that was one of my favorite books. So it was uh, yeah. So you know, like over the years, it just sort of like been doing more and more and more, and then past couple of years kind of like uh kicked it into like overdrive where like i have like like a few different series coming out and i got to do some licensed work too which i'm sure we'll talk about um mm -hmm. and uh yeah that's that's basically where we're like where we are today awesome uh you mentioned gutter magic now i'm not familiar with gutter magic uh but i'm looking at the cover and Immediately, I'm like, well, this appeals to me. So give me a pitch <laughs> on Gutter Magic. I want to know what this is up. What's up with this? All right. So, okay, cool. Uh, Gutter Magic basically uh, takes place in a world where uh, halfway during, like, World War II, wizards got involved on both sides. And uh, rather than there sort of being a race to, like, the atomic bomb, there was, like, this, like, kind of magical arms race. Uh, oh, that's cool. <laughs> you have, like, you know it's like kind of like world war two with like dragons, like strafing tanks and, and, and things like that. Uh, so that's like kind of like the past of the world. Right. And then if you fast forward to the present, it's kind of like modern day in the aftermath of this world where like, you know, it's like New York and, but it, it's where wizardry is like openly practiced and, and like elves and goblins and everybody sort of like living together in New York, and it's still kind of like in the aftermath of like this war. And the main character is this guy named um, Cinder, and uh, he comes from like a very uh, powerful, like magical legacy. Like 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 everyone like everyone in this family is a powerful wizard, except for him. For some reason, he doesn't have the gift, and he's resented it his whole life. And his whole life, he's tried to figure out. Uh, a way to kind of gain this power. Um, and then uh, basically the first miniseries is a story of his pursuit of that. And then uh, we're, we're starting a, a second series that's called Smoke and Mirrors, which is going to start coming out um, towards the end of this month. I mean, you know, obviously with like things with comic shops and the whole industry right now, things are a little bit up in the air, but it's like, it's pretty much done and just sort of like ready to come out. But in, in Smoke and Mirrors, it's like, so now he's got magical power and is sort of like learning that it's as much of a curse as it is, as it is a blessing. So yeah, that's basically it. It's like um, kind of like, I hmm. guess, like adventure, kind of like, I guess like, it's like almost like D&D &D and like a weird magical version of New York, you know? <laughs> Yeah, no, I was looking at it and like you got the big gear on the front and I'm like, ooh, steampunk, like immediately yeah. <laughs> I went steampunk yeah. in my head. So Yeah, so like like steampunk's kind of like the aesthetic we were going for and, and like our kind of rationale for it was that like 
you know, kind of all the magical uh, forces unleashed on both sides caused a lot more devastation than World War II did. And society is still kind of like crawling back. So they don't have the same kind of industrialized capacities that we used to. So, yeah. you know, we're basically back at, at like sort of uh, steam, steam age. Plus, it also looks really cool and goes really well with magic. So, so. Totally. <laughs> like, um, I'm, a, I'm a tabletop gamer myself and... Mm-hmm. Uh, my favorite D and D setting is Eberron. If you've ever played it, oh yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. And so, like, that's what when I saw the cover, I'm like, oh, this kind of looks like Eberron. So, <laughs> I'm really, uh, I'm definitely going to be checking that out. So, oh, um, yeah, awesome. I, I actually want to talk briefly before we get into to the two big books of yours. I want to talk about. I did have to get the little information about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. What was it like <laughs> working on the Turtles? <laughs> oh, it was pretty awesome. Um, it's kind of funny because like uh, the book I, I was working on was uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Universe, which um, was kind of like uh, like like the way it's been publishing is like they have the main series and then Universe is sort of there to kind of be able to explore storylines and characters outside of the main universe. So while I've written Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, I've, I've never actually written one of the turtles, which is like a little annoying but like you know hopefully i'll get there someday but it was like a lot of fun because <laughs> i got to write uh a lot of the characters uh from the the mighty Mutant animals team um so the issue i wrote was uh with like man ray and uh and sally ride um and that was like it was a ton of fun it was um you know it was like kind of challenging in a different way from doing um uh, mm-hmm like my own like creator own stuff because yeah it was like so i had to kind of like think of everything on like a couple of different levels like i had to make sure that what i was writing kind of made sense with the story and also didn't violate any continuity uh you know mm-hmm. everything that i wanted to introduce had to be like kind of not only okayed by my editors at idw it also had to go to like nickelodeon who owns teenage mutant ninja turtles and they had to like turn off and everything so but it was cool. Yeah, true. And it was just, it's just like fun because like, you know, you kind of like get, you know, you get to see like your own like little kind of piece of, piece of like the jigsaw puzzle, you know, like, like, like fitting in there and, and fitting in with like other stuff. So, you know, like I, it, it was a ton of fun to work on. I'd love to do more. Like, you know, hopefully I will when, if the opportunity comes around. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Um, well, that's cool. I, I, I'm always interested when I see, especially someone who does a lot of indie books, a lot of creator owned stuff, when they mm-hmm. do get their hands on something licensed. I'm always curious as to like, like you said, there's a lot of like, people you have to, you know, check with for a lot of stuff. And yeah. so yeah. you can't just do whatever you want. So I thought that was kind of interesting that I saw that yeah. on your resume. Yeah, it's like, you know, like, um, in the store, in one of the stories I wrote, there were these like, kind of, uh, um, cyborg uh mutants they were and we were, we were calling them like the, the gang of four but they were like they were basically like the idea was like they were werewolves so it was like they could mutate into werewolves but then they could mutate back and back to human and it was because of the cybernetic circuitry and that was like it was like a whole thing where like you know we had to make sure that everyone was okay with it because it's like not like these characters are going to be, they weren't like planned to become like this, like a huge part of anything. They were just like for that story, boom. But it's like, it's like implications, you know? And even if you, mm-hmm. when we were kind of looking on like the, the TMNT, like fan forums and things like that, it's like, they're like, what? They can turn back. Like, what does this mean for, you know, like, <laughs> you know, you're like you know, mutant world. And it's just like, well, okay. You know, not much like you know in all honesty but you know but it's still kind of cool to know that like everything you do there sort of like can like pond ripple out you know and then like touch other parts of, of the universe totally especially with a like a lore that's that long lasting mm-hmm. and a fan base that can be pretty passionate so <laughs> yeah yeah, that's awesome. All right, well, let's talk about your books because I'm very excited to get into these. Um, the first one I want to talk about is uh, Road of Bones. Um, uh, for those who don't know, this book uh, is it's um, 
it's yeah <laughs> it's it's really great and um uh it's set in russia and uh, <laughs> i'm trying to put, figure out how to put this um it's pretty brutal but yeah, the no one idea. thing i really like about it is um I am utterly, as as I mentioned before, I'm Finnish. Um, I am utterly fascinated with Russian, Germanic, and like uh, like mythology and fae and things like that because mm-hmm. it doesn't get nearly as much like spotlight as the Greeks and the Romans and even the Norse, you know, like. Uh-huh. And it, it's fascinating. And there is a there's obviously a thread going through this involving. Uh, one of those legends, which I which I actually really enjoyed. As soon as I started realizing what was happening, it was like, ooh, that's really cool. So, oh, um, nice. kind of talk to me about the genesis of this story because um, I, re- I read the uh, the author's note at the end, you know, about this is your heritage and such. But how did this become a story you wanted to tell? I guess. All right. Yeah. Now. Um, yeah. So it is pretty twisted. Like you know, <laughs> not not going to argue. It's hard. That's not going to be like everybody's mm-hmm. like cup of tea. Um, but basically, um, what happened was I was I had like an idea where I wanted to do a, a story about like a prison break, and mm-hmm. I think it was I think it was for a sci-fi story. Like I, I'm not even like 100 percent clear on like where this all this all started, which is a little weird. But uh, so anyway, so I started researching prisons and prison breaks and, and I, and I stumbled on a lot of, uh, stories about, uh, about the Russian gulag. And I just found mm-hmm. it really enlightening because it was, you know, it's something that I knew existed, but I didn't really know many of like the details about it. Um, and just like how brutal and, and harsh it was. And the more I read kind of the more fascinated in it, I became and I was like, you know, this, I was like, I, I almost feel like I don't need any kind of like sci-fi thing. Like, like this is like an interesting place to like put a story. And, um, but you know, like I'm, I'm, I'm more of like a fantasy sci-fi person. So I kind of like put it away for like a little while and didn't really think of it, but it just kept coming back into my head where I was like, what could I do there? What could I do with it? And, um, and then I started thinking about like uh, like the folklore aspect of it and how to like weave that in. And then and then I was like, okay, this is, this is kind of cool. And and it just sort of like developed from there. Like like it like literally like wouldn't let me go. Like I would try to be like working on other stuff, and I would just keep thinking thinking about Road of Bones. So so finally, I just um, I just wrote it all out and. Um, I had uh, I had known the artist on it, uh, Alex Cormack. I'd known him for like a, a number of years and been a fan, but we'd never actually worked together. But I, I was at New York Comic Con, I think it was like two years ago, and he was there. And I was like, hey, Alex, I got an idea for, you know, the story. And, and I just kind of gave him the broad strokes and he loved it because he loves horror. And he was like, and he's like, and I've always wanted to like do something set like, in the snow so he was like this is like perfect so yeah so we we did did a few pages and started like uh sending them around and idw was like uh, really interested in it like um uh, bobby our editor loved it like off the bat and then he just sort of uh sent it up to the editor-in-chief and and the publisher and everything and, and they all loved it too so yeah and then from then it was just like off to the races but um, gotcha. yeah, it's pretty gnarly, you know, it, it's a gnarly, it's a gnarly story. But the, the thing that like, I, I think one of the things that drew me to it was that like, you know, it, it, it's like, it's a horrific piece of like real life history, you know, like yeah. the reading and stuff I was doing, I was like, you know, this is like, this is a horror story, you know, like this is like horrible, horrible situation. And like, it actually happened. And I was like, mm-hmm. so it's kind of, it was interesting to me to introduce a supernatural horror element and see kind of how they played off each other, like the supernatural horror and, and the human horror and like, uh, and sort of not knowing which one is worse, I thought was like a really yeah. interesting thing. 
Yeah, um, and I think um, I, I love the Russian setting. I think uh, in in the U.S. especially, uh, when we're taught European history, we're taught British and French history. Right. <laughs> like we're not taught yeah. true European history, and <laughs> there's such a knowledge gap about Russia. Yeah, and uh, especially Stalin, who you know, this is all revolving around him, mm -hmm. is a fascinating horrible man like yeah. <laughs> like like yeah. I, I the, the fact that everybody talks about hitler a lot and i'm like man people should talk about stalin way more <laughs> like, so i mean there's you know there's like stories about stalin that like you know if you told somebody they would probably assume you were joking <laughs> you know what i mean because he just really yeah. was like uh just um, you know a madman like i don't know like yeah a lot of crazy stuff. There's, I remember the thing that piqued my interest with Stalin was a movie that came out in the mid '90s mm -hmm. called Children of the Revolution. Mm -hmm. um, but it featured it's set in Australia, but it features a woman who it was trying to get the Communist Party of Australia off the off the ground, mm -hmm. and basically she fell in love with Stalin. Oh wow! And and it's he's played by F. Murray Abraham in the best way. He's so Probably. good. And um, basically, long story short, she has a baby, and it might be his. It might be a security director's. It might be this other guy's. But uh, it's uh, really fascinating because this guy's growing up thinking, or he grows up not knowing, and then he reali realizes <laughs> he might be Stalin's kid, and he starts seeing Stalin in the mirror. It's fascinating. Right. But I remember that put Stalin on the map for me. It wasn't high school history class or anything. It was yeah. a movie. <laughs> so. Yeah. You know, yeah, it, yeah, that, it, 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 we, yeah, we, we kind of like in high school, especially. It's like you just sort of like gloss over a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff. And yeah, they go from like World War Two straight to Korea, and you're like, wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then especially awesome. with, yeah, with Russia, you know, and like with like the Cold War and everything. It's like, you know, it, not, not. Yeah that Stalin would be painted in like a positive light, but it's just like, sort of like we have all these kind of like preconceptions about like Russia and Russian history. And uh, it's, but it is pretty fascinating to dive into. Yeah, definitely. And um, so back to the book, um, as you already kind of stated, it, it is a jailbreak uh, as keeping mm -hmm. the gulags and uh, the construction of the road of bones, which was really interesting uh, reading in your note at the end about the road of bones. I, I didn't know that. So that was a really fascinating thing to look into. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I absolutely loved and the thing that jumped out at me about this book is so they're in the gulag and he's being interrogated and, you know, the joke that got him in trouble and uh, the planning and everything. And all these pages are, really dark visually dark mm -hmm. and then they escape and that first page after they escaped is almost all white and that just popped at me like it jumped out at me really hard uh -huh. it's like page 24 i think yeah um i really liked that that was a really great way to like they're free now but now what <laughs> you know <Yeah. laughs> like, so kind of like out of out of the frying pan into the fire like you know you're escaped but you're still in siberia which is one of the like most forbidding places on earth like even if you're well equipped it's a hard place to survive in so yeah exactly <laughs> but um so it's a story of survival um mm -hmm. with three men obviously with very different temperaments uh, but all coming from you know the same situation none of them want to go back none of them want to be captives and they're all pretty determined that any fate at this point is better than being a captive yeah um and I, I liked it because there's a, it, I like a good survival story, like a, you know, um, especially something like this. Uh, there seems to be a nice plethora of northern snow based ones, um, and mm -hmm. it's it's really interesting because, you know, the only the only animals that run about are really the predators. You know, there's no prey mm -hmm. hopping about eating grass because there's no grass. So, yeah. <laughs> um, but I really liked it, and like I said, the the supernatural edge to this was really great. I have to ask. Okay. <laughs> what is he? <laughs> because we know he's not the helpful spirit who watches over the home. We find that out at the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Well, um, so, it's also left to up interpretation, right? Because it's also a little yeah. added at the end. <laughs> and that's that's what I want to say. Like I, I I call this twisted, but I mean that with like 
the utmost compliment because I this story was all up my alley. So when it came down to like the last shot, the ending, I I ate it all up. I, I was I thought oh, yeah. I loved it. We we got a lot of horror fans on the on the network, so okay. <laughs> it's very much up our alley. So, but yeah, I'm just curious. So in your head, did you just want to leave that ambiguous, or did you have another thing yeah. that you were like? this is what he actually is and i'm just missing it <laughs> yeah, no no I, I did want to leave it kind of ambiguous because i, I didn't mm-hmm. you know i mean maybe it's just a manifestation of his of his madness or maybe right. mm-hmm. maybe it's a real thing i mean if you want to talk about like where i drew the um maybe inspiration for its behavior from and this is not me saying this is what it is um like i would say uh, a lot of like the legends of um, the Wendigo, which is like um, mm-hmm. uh, a Native American myth. Uh, that's like a lot of what I drew from. Uh, yeah, in terms of like how it would behave and like what its motives are. But like, yeah, I think one of the, one of the things I, I really wanted to leave open was sort of the question of whether this is like a real thing or is mm-hmm. this like his own twisted coping mechanism for being exposed <laughs> to such like a well, like a horrific like situation um like i said it's like i didn't really want to kind of answer the question of which yeah which was worst i wanted to uh ask it you know Gotcha. No, I mean, and yeah, I totally respect that. I'm the I'm the kind of person I'm like I need answers. <laughs> so I immediately, as I finished, I, I pulled up Wikipedia and I'm like looking through Russian Fay and I'm like maybe maybe something like that. I was like no no just no, no, and no. I, in the back of my head I'm like it's probably just you know it could just be a figment of his imagination. Yeah. It's, a, it's a figment of his madness, you know. Yeah. And they're out in the wilderness and they're starving and I'm like that's really fascinating. But yeah, I mean, I did. Yeah, I just had to ask. Russian <laughs> folklore in there like you know like there's a kind of a nod to koshi the deathless in in issue mm-hmm. two um i didn't put it in but i did read a lot about like baba yaga and and, and mm-hmm. things like that but and i think that all kind of like you know is in there but i i wouldn't say like you're never gonna get a definitive answer out of me as to like what it is yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what i liked about it too. Like, um, I, I i kept thinking about like I'm, i don't want to put a, the ending like solidify the ending in my own head because i have one ending where it has like yeah the supernatural element but then yeah. i have my other one where i start going into my own rabbit hole of like like we talked about this story is about a jailbreak right and the only thing that we know about this guy is just like there's no reason to, not to believe that he went into prison for that reason but mm-hmm. ultimately they're all escape be escape prisoners. Right. Well, it's not to say that he could be lying. So, mm-hmm. and so he, I have these two endings too. Right. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, uh, I love, I love, I love stories like that. Like, you know, I think like mm-hmm. one of my favorite movies is, uh, well, I, I think like any movie that kind of like surprises me, is, it becomes one of my favorites, but like I was going to say, mm-hmm. like, one of my favorites is, is uh, the usual suspects. Because oh, yeah. it's like, you know, the more you think about it, you're like, you're like, n- like every, the whole movie is like, just like a made up story, like, or, or it could be like, you don't know that any of that stuff happened, you know? Yeah. Like, I, that was just one thing that like, I loved about it and, you know, kind of like trying to do like a similar effect, like in my own way, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I really liked it. And like I said, it, the... The desire was mostly based around the fact that I need to know more, <laughs> not so much anything else. So, but yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. the The ending was really great, and it's just twisted and yeah. Um, but see, so that actually brings me over to your new book. Now, um, this book is Sea of Sorrows. It's also being produced by IDW. Mm-hmm. Now, this is not out yet. No. And with Diamond not distributing comics, it's going to be released sometime in the future. It was originally planned for May, I believe you said. Yeah, it was originally planned for May, but um, with you know the current crisis and everything potentially extending mm-hmm. into into April, um, it's like we can't really say like we have no idea like what like uh, what the landscape's going to be like, and, and we can't really figure that out now until diamond opens back up so once we kind of like yeah. uh w- once that happens and shops are getting new books i think like idw and 
and us uh, as the creators, we're, we're going to really take a look at like, you know, when's the best time to like put this out. Like it may be like as soon as possible. It may be like a couple of months off yeah. because, you know, like I think like, I think like one of the worries is that like uh, when things are back on, it's just going to be this like kind of flood of all the content that's been held back. So it might be better to like just wait a little bit, but I mean, it's, it's definitely coming out there. IDW has been like, you know, so supportive of the book and, and very much like, you know, uh, like we're like very kind of apologetic that it's happening, but even though it's not their fault, but you know, like they're, they're just like, you know, we, we want, we want this book to, um, to be successful and we want people to read it. So, you know, once we know more, you'll know more. Yeah, definitely. Um, and no, I totally agree. We're uh, like that first week. Once everything's lifted, we don't want a hundred comic books immediately yeah. that we all need to pick up. No one wants that. Yeah, so, and it's just like movies. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> That'd be the longest episode. <laughs> we have issues. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, we uh, just like the movies. Like people are saying, like, why was that delayed till November? And it's like, do you want all these movies coming out the first week and we're able to go to the theater? Like, no, that's yeah, ridiculous. Like you're, so. you're not gonna be able, you're not gonna be able to see all of them, and then it's like you know, it's it's like it's and it's not like fair to the movies either because. Mm -hmm. So it like, it's, um, the, you know, the things are like kind of staggered for, for a reason. Like they're all kind of competing, but they all want to have like a little bit of a chance. You know what I mean? It's like, uh, so, you know, like if you're an indie film, you don't want to be like, uh, opening the same weekend as like the next Avengers movie. (laughs) You know what I mean? So yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, and, uh, but we, we're going to figure it out, but like, you know, like we're, we're working on it. We're, we're, you know, Alex and I are still both like, like I'm still writing. He's, he's, he's still drawing and, you know, so we're not like stopping. It's just going to yeah. be a little bit delayed probably. Yeah. And, and that's great. Um, being the age that we're in, mm-hmm. um, you know, we think about the golden era of comics and the idea that, you know, the writer and the artist don't have to be in the same room. (laughs) Like they could literally be across the country, across the globe from each other. Mm -hmm. That's really interesting. So even if you guys are, you know, at home, you know, doing the right thing by yourself, you can still work on this stuff. Totally. Totally. Yeah. That's that's awesome. Still in touch, you know, like Justin, like uh, Alex is, uh, Alex is up in New Hampshire. I'm in, uh, I'm in New Jersey and Justin Birch, our letterer, who's doing amazing work by the way. Uh, mm-hmm. is down in West Virginia and IDW is in San Diego, but you know, it, it hasn't, like, <laughs> hasn't stopped anything in, in terms of like the process. So yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, so let's talk about the book. Um, sure. So it is not out yet, but uh, we did get an advanced copy to mm-hmm. review. Uh, and if you guys are interested, uh host has written up a review of the first issue. Um, I kept it spoiler and- free, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> over on a geek-network.com so yeah. uh but I, I have to first of all just this cover oh, like yeah. <laughs> i'm I, i'm an ocean guy i'm a surfer uh-huh. um and a lot of people are scared of open water mm-hmm. i've heard that a lot and i'm like man that's where i'm most comfortable but this cover even gives me the creeps a little <laughs> bit <laughs> like, like it's, it's great it's, with the later covers so yeah <laughs> Yeah, no, oh. it's it's amazing, and I think it's like a big part of like kind of uh, what gets people excited about the book because they kind of see that, and it's like it's such like mm-hmm. a like oh yeah, like it's like it's reminiscent of like Jaws. It's it's you know like I don't know, just like the kind of unknown coming up from the deep to to grab you, yeah, like, um, and seeing just enough of the unknown, yeah, not the whole thing, <laughs> so. Yeah, like a good cover we've talked about in the past. Um, we talked about the the Power Rangers covers, the helmet covers. Mm-hmm. And I do not read the Power Rangers comics, but every time I see one of those covers, I'm like, I should pick this up. That's gorgeous. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, like, um, you know, like, 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 it's a time honored tradition in of the past like 20 years to like give shit to the uh, 90s comics with all the die cut covers and foil and stuff like that. Oh, foils, yeah. I'm not going to lie. It's like I see a die cut cover or, or like something like that. It's like, ooh, what's this? You know? <laughs> Shiny. <laughs> I, I distinctly... Oh, sorry. No, 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 I'm saying it is eye-catching. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I distinctly remember growing up, I was at an age when 
X-Men 1 launched with Jim Lee. Mm -hmm. And I was one of those kids, like, how many covers? I need them all. (laughs) Like, immediately. So, ever since then, I've been a cover kid. So, um, but yeah, so getting into the book itself, um, this, I, I, I really enjoyed this, and this, this one is very much up my alley. Um, I, like, I'll tell you the thing I got the vibe of was the thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I was, I was thinking the the cast of the thing set in the uh, setting of the lighthouse. <laughs> That's an interesting way to put it. Yeah, I totally get that. I totally get that vibe. Yeah, I I really enjoy it. Um, I like there's, it's a larger cast mm-hmm. than the last book. Yeah, and um, the very distinct characters. I really enjoy them. And there's a lot going on. Yeah, like it's really interesting. And one issue is not enough for me for this. You know what I mean? Like uh-huh. I need more of it. And but the underwater scenes, uh, the art is just incredible. Like it's just yeah, the constant presence of the bubbles, but also how pitch black it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the the bit with the shark was just oh, yeah. <laughs> like yeah. So, that's one of my um, but I really. Yeah. Oh, what was oh, sorry? What was I that? saying? That's one of my favorite parts too. Um, and like I think like the, the underwater stuff. Like you know, Alex, we talked about like his approach, and he was like, he wanted to make it seem like it's like an alien world, like right, yeah. right on Earth. I think that that like you're, you're, drew it to drew him to it. Like he's mm-hmm. so into the abyss that's almost atmospheric yeah. because the bubbles make it look like stars. I, yeah. That's why I love it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy, and uh, it's also very pulpy, mm-hmm. like like a pulp, almost like a pulp comic adventure. Yeah, uh, which I really like, and I think obviously, um, I think the characters have a lot to do with that, and like you know the aesthetic of everything. It gives me a very pulp adventure vibe, but um, I, I, yeah, I really like this comic, and the design Thank of you. the other, whatever Thank we're you. calling it, is. Mm-hmm. Absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> so it, it yeah. hooked me. I was like, ooh. <laughs> so. Yeah. And then uh, um, I really wanted to talk about the um, the story. So uh, mm-hmm. he was telling his war stories. Yeah. You know, and he's talking about, like, I did things. I mean, we all did things, things we had to do, things to say we needed to hold some hill. Blah, blah, blah. Basically, it didn't leave us much room to be human, and I immediately got brought back to see to Road of Bones, mm-hmm. and I was like, "Oh, that's like an interesting theme between the two. Yeah. You know, we, do, we sometimes we do things we have to do, and it doesn't leave us to be human. And then, yeah, you know, y- you kill something inside of yourself, and I was like, "Oh, that's really interesting." Yeah. The settings are actually right around the same time too. Yeah, I think it's. It, I mean, it, it it would probably be like, um like a few years like i think like a few decades before but um because i think like world war csr is post-world war one road of bones is like post-world war two but there's definitely like kind of like common threads and i think like when we were talking about doing a sequel like we didn't really want to do road of bones two where like we explained all the stuff you asked me to explain and then like, you know, yeah. <laughs> or, or like, you know, like what happens to him next. Cause I think we really liked how it ended. So, um, excuse me once. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. I'm here with me. These, uh, Do thing. these are, uh, you know, quarantine times, but, uh, <laughs> I got you, man. But, uh, <laughs> but basically, uh, what we did so we, we sat down and we, and we took a look at road of bones and we we're like well what did we really like and we like the themes we were doing we were talking about we like the historical setting and uh and kind of like that whole kind of interplay like i was saying between like real world horror and um and supernatural horror so we, we just started looking at other stories we could tell in the same vein like uh, alex actually came up with like a really good line he was like you know it's like a it's like a sequel in the same way that like hot fuzz is a sequel to Shaun of the dead, you know, oh, right. like, uh, they're kind of like thematically consistent and, and there's like things that like parallels, but it, it is totally like a new, new story. And I like it. Cause it's like, it's the, both of you actually, the three of you working again together, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah. Got the whole band back. <laughs> <laughs> so it's actually, it's, just, it's actually fitting. It's just working with a different 
other, as Keith put it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, different other, different characters. Which I have to say is probably one of my new favorite designs of like what we're talking about here because oh, that looks awesome. Yeah, well, all credit, all credit goes to Alex on that. He's he's like an amazing uh, character and creature designer. So, um, you know, we're uh, like when he when he was sh- when he was showing me the uh, original like sketches and stuff. There, there, I thought they were awesome. Nice. Yeah. Um, and let me say also you you have not seen anything yet <laughs> uh, okay <laughs> so keep an eye on the later issues i think that you're gonna there's gonna be some really really amazing surprises yeah no i'm all in like i really love this first issue oh, yeah man. there's so many hooks to this mm-hmm. yeah if it's not there's gonna like, be one thing it's, it'll be another one yeah right. yep. <laughs> there's like four or five things that i'm like well i need to know more about that yeah. and like he's telling again he's telling the war stories and he's he's hinting at you know mm-hmm. you know i'm you killed something inside yourself and i'm like oh what, what's that mean and then immediately it's like well i was on a u-boat and you know and i was like what and then i was like oh my god all these things are happening and i need to know all of them <laughs> and <laughs> so uh it, i i really really actually really dug this book um oh, so sure. i'm excited for it to come out um we always talk about idw is one of our favorite publishers mm-hmm. um and they do some really good work um but we're really excited to get it and get this out uh get publishing again mm-hmm. get back to comics as normal no, <laughs> so yeah. It's like uh, uh so yeah things okay. have changed so much like in the past month alone it's just it's it's nuts but you know like it's like you know the great thing about comics is, is like you know it is kind of like it's worldwide and, and it's like on a lot of different levels from like people kind of self-publishing their own books all the way up to marvel and dc but i think like we're all kind of like united in like our love of it so it's kind mm-hmm. of like we're all in this together we're all gonna get through it you know so yeah yeah and it's it's a great day and age for indie comics oh yeah um Mm -hmm. man with everything happening idw uh we talk about boom a lot we we love vault Mm -hmm. you know all these Mm -hmm. different publishers and it's just incredible for indie comics and then mainstream comics is really kicking butt too right now we're really big fans of the whole um uh, x-men jonathan hickman stuff going on right yeah. now because it's fascinating <laughs> so. I, love I love uh have you guys been reading uh immortal hulk by uh, al ewing it's been on my list i've been wanting to it's really good like i, I highly recommend it it's uh yeah i'll have to check that uh, out yeah definitely like a uh, shelf book <laughs> it's just so much out there man <laughs> like, but uh i have marvel like, limited so i, I can yeah. catch up months later but not active you it's, know? Like, it's like there's no new comics coming out but it's 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 like a really good time to kind of catch up on on a bunch of stuff that you may not have read yet because there is mm-hmm. so much out there so it's like i think you know like I, that's one thing I'm, I'm i'm doing um with uh with my store uh my, my friend's store east side mags in uh in jersey they're uh like I'm like five blocks away and I'm in there like, uh, you know, would be in there like every week, but like, uh, I'm like, uh, I'm just trying like every week to, to, instead of like doing a pull list of like new comics, I'm like, all right, well, I want to read this. And I want to read that. So mm-hmm. like, give me, give me this like uh, older stuff to like check out. So it's cool. yeah, definitely. And we, we've been doing the same thing with trades. Mm-hmm. That's actually the, uh, I told you about the, uh, charity stream we're going to have later mm-hmm. it's to uh purchase um all ages books mm-hmm. graphic novels yeah. from local comic book stores and then we're going to donate them to local libraries oh that's great so that's such a good idea yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so because well, i remember going to the library reading comics you know yeah. <laughs> so as a kid let me so, I actually yeah. want to uh, 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 let me just plug one uh one uh one book uh that a friend of mine does it's an all ages yeah, please uh canto uh, it's another oh. book. <laughs> uh, they are we we love david uh, and drew, david and drew <laughs> like, yeah they're like i got to know them this year because you know kind of both uh being like around like idw stuff like at cons and stuff and uh they're they're great guys and, and i love that book so i was gonna say if that's, yeah. if that's not on your list already it definitely should be they were our first interview actually <laughs> oh, <I love> <laughs> um, and they, they're they're great guys and yes we plan to mine several copies of canto with this Hell yeah. awesome. <laughs> awesome. So, awesome man well thank you so much for joining us i really appreciate it uh Josue, do you have any follow-up questions anything to wrap up with um 
bring out Sea of Sorrows, the rest of it out. I want to read it all. All right, all right. <laughs> we're working on it. We're working on it. It's like yeah, it's going to be out there as soon as possible. It's just yeah, no, no I'll be waiting. Part is, is, is the hang up, but yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, like uh, <laughs> definitely, like uh, we'll keep you guys posted. And and like I said, it's as soon as kind of uh, things settle down and we're able to figure out uh, the way forward, like we're we're definitely going to be transparent about that and share it with everybody. Yeah. Nice. All right. Well, um, thank you so much for joining us again. We really appreciate it. Uh, thank you everybody for listening to this special interview, support your uh, independent comic book, uh, artists and writers and support your local comic book stores in this time. Uh, do what you can. I know our local store, uh, Samurai comics is selling digital gift cards. So what I'm doing every week is I know about how much I spend every week. I am just putting that much on a gift card every week. And that way when it's ready, I'll be able to pick everything up. So, um, it's a good way to support everybody. Uh, and thank you for so much for joining us at the geek network. Uh, once again, our website is geek network.com and our new, uh, social media has recently changed because we wanted to be, um, we wanted to have the same thing across all networks. So, on facebook twitter and instagram we are at gn podcasts so g's and girl and is a nancy podcasts uh, but yeah thank you so much for joining us sir we really appreciate it and um be safe out there and can't wait to see what else you come up with okay thank you guys that was great I had a great time talking and uh, hopefully do it again sometime and uh, you Definitely. guys stay safe too um stay in and uh, <laughs> like i said yeah we'll, we'll all get through this so be well. Definitely. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much. Have a good day, guys. Yeah. Thanks, Rich.